This is going to be verse by verse of Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9, 1. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. So you see, we're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ in this chapter is a better sanctuary. The first covenant under the law had ordinances of divine service. That is, there was some things that God told them to observe and do. But this was in a worldly sanctuary. Moses was told to make a tabernacle after the pattern of the one in heaven. Hebrews 9, 2, For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. So the tabernacle was a tent-like structure. And notice it says, the first, for there was a tabernacle made, the first. That is the first part of the tabernacle. In the first part of the tabernacle, it is the holy place. And in there, you had the table, you had the showbread. In Leviticus 24, 6, it says, And thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row, upon the pure table before the Lord. So notice that the showbread, it has two rows, six in a row, and that's six and six, 66, representing the 66 books of the King James Bible. That showbread is a picture of the Word of God. You also had the candlestick, which pictures the Holy Spirit shedding light on the Scriptures, or the showbread. Now, Hebrews 9, 3, And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. So after the second veil, in the second part, you have the holiest of all, the most holy place. And look what it has in verse 4, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. So in this holiest of all, you have the golden censer, the Ark of the Covenant, which had the golden pot of manna and Aaron's rod and the tables of the covenant. So this Ark of the Covenant represented God being with man because the manna inside came from heaven. Aaron's rod was a picture of Jesus' resurrection and the tables of the covenant were a revelation that had been given to Moses straight from God. So the Ark of the Covenant represented God being with man. And the things in the Ark of the Covenant <clears throat> were from God. It was something of God on earth, just like Jesus Christ. That's how the Ark of the Covenant is a picture of Jesus Christ. He is bred from heaven, just like manna. Aaron's rod that budded pictures his resurrection. And the table of the covenant have commandments that Jesus Christ kept perfectly. Jesus Christ kept the commandments perfectly. So the Ark of the Covenant, a picture of Jesus Christ, represents God being with man. Jesus Christ was God with man. Hebrews 9, 5, And over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. So the cherubim shadowed the mercy seat, which is on top of the Ark of the Covenant. And Paul says, of which we cannot now speak particularly. So he can't talk about it right now. Paul talked about other things that he couldn't mention. 2 Corinthians 12, 4 says how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to others. So Paul saw some things, knew about some things that he just could not now speak about particularly. And you got people going around saying they've been to heaven and that God's letting them say it and all this when he didn't even let the Apostle Paul write it down in the Bible. Hebrews 9, 6. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Okay, the first part of the tabernacle, the first, that's the holy place. Any priest could go in. And they went in every day into the holy place to accomplish the service of God. Now, this is different for the holiest of all, the most holy place, the second. Hebrews 9, 7. And into the second went the high priest alone, 
once every year, and not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the heirs of the people. So went to the second, the most holy place, the holiest of all. Not just any priest could go in, only the high priest could go in. And he could go only go in once a year. He had to have blood to offer not only for the sins of the people, but also for his own sins. And this is why Jesus Christ is a greater high priest. Because he didn't have to have blood to offer for his own sins. He shed his blood for everybody else's sin. Hebrews 9.8, the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, well, as the first tabernacle was yet standing. So the way for everyone to get into the holiest of all was not made manifest yet back then, but it is now. Since Jesus Christ died, shed his blood, was buried and resurrected, it is now made possible for whosoever will to get the righteousness of Jesus Christ and be made more perfect than even the high priest back then to where they you go straight in you have access because you got the blood of the lord jesus christ this wasn't true while the first tabernacle was yet standing men say that people in the old testament were looking forward to the cross and had all the benefits of salvation that me and you have today and that they had everything that our salvation gives today that can't be right because the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. So if we all got the same salvation as they did in the Old Testament, then why was the way into the holiest of all not yet made manifest? Hebrews 9.9, 9, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Things in the Old Testament are figures, and the gifts and the sacrifices couldn't make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. This is another reason why Jesus Christ is a better high priest. He could make you perfect pertaining to the conscience. He can make you perfect because once you're born again, you don't have to wonder, am I saved or am I lost? He completely saves you, completely forgives you. Your blood has been completely washed by the blood. You don't have to worry about getting another sacrifice. Hebrews 9.14, How much more should the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? It's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Hebrews 9.9, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. So nothing they did back then could do what the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ does for us today. And the things you see in the Old Testament are only figures, pictures, shadows, types. Hebrews 9.10, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances, imposed on them into the time of reformation so these are meat and drink offerings these are carnal ordinances but we have redemption through the blood of the lord jesus christ in hebrews 9 11 says but christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say, not of this building. So this is a greater and more perfect tabernacle and not just a worldly sanctuary. Notice that heavenly things aren't made with hands and they are eternal. 2 Corinthians 5.1 says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And the spiritual circumcision you received at salvation is eternal and not made with hands. Colossians 2.11, In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Mark 14.58, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple 
that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. Jesus is a better sanctuary. People think they must go to a church building to get a hold of God. But, Acts 7.48, Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Acts 17.24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Hebrews 9.12, Neither by by the blood of bo uh, goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jesus Christ went into the heavenly holy place with his own blood for us. It wasn't the offering of the shed blood of an animal. The shed blood of an animal couldn't take away sins. You would have to continually offer them. But the blood of Jesus Christ obtained eternal redemption. He only had to be offered once. And he didn't offer for himself because he's sinless. That's how Jesus is better. He offered his own blood, which was God's blood. He only had to offer himself once. He didn't have to offer for himself. He enters the heavenly tabernacle and not the earthly tabernacle that is just simply patterned after the heavenly. Hebrews 9.13, For if the blood of bulls and goats... And the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. So the blood, ashes, and water were to purify the sin in the Old Testament. They purified them, but it wasn't a permanent thing. And a man just couldn't come to the Lord in prayer to confess the sin and be done with it, like we can today. If the blood of animals gave them temporary forgiveness, then realize what the blood of Christ can give you. Eternal forgiveness and a pure conscience. You can go to the Lord in prayer and confess a sin on the spot and have a pure conscience. These men in the Old Testament couldn't have a pure conscience consistently like we can. Not only does the blood of Christ give us eternal forgiveness, but it can keep our conscience pure each day. The sins we did in the past may come back to our memory, but you must also remember that the blood of Jesus Christ can purge your conscience from dead works. If filthy images you have seen in the past come up in your mind, then say a prayer. Remember, you have the power of the blood. He can purge your conscience from dead works. Hebrews 9.14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. There is that word eternal again. Also notice that phrase without spot. When you get born again, the Lord makes your record without spot, just like the Lord Jesus Christ. And when those Old Testament saints offered a lamb, it was without spot. It is just a figure of the better sacrifice, Jesus Christ. The things in the Old Testament were a figure of what was to come. Jesus offered himself without spot to God, as the lamb in Exodus 12, 5 is said to be without spot. The lamb couldn't take away sin, but Jesus Christ, the lamb of God, can. Hebrews 9, 15, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So Jesus Christ is our mediator. 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ and his blood are our redemption. Colossians 1.14, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Verse 15 says, For the redemption of transgressions that were under the first testament. If you're not saved, then you're under the first testament. You're under the law. No one can keep the law perfectly, so therefore it can't save you. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law, and if you will believe on him, then you will be redeemed. So verse 15, for the redemption of transgressions that were under the first testament. Hebrews 9.16, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. So what that's saying is, the New Testament technically didn't actually begin 
until the death of the testator, the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the Gospels, before you get to the death of Jesus Christ, you're really still in the Old Testament. Because for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. 9.17, for a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is, no, no, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So Jesus Christ's death started the New Testament. And the testator in the Old Testament is the entire body of animal sacrifices. But in the New Testament, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9.18, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. So the first testament wasn't without blood. You see, before the law and after the law had blood sacrifices. God has always required a blood sacrifice throughout the scriptures. And God is not for the bloody sacrifice of people. He required an animal sacrifice. And then the bloody sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was God manifest in the flesh. Now Hebrews 9, 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law... He took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So the blood of animals gave people remission of sins. The blood of Jesus Christ gives you complete redemption and forgiveness. Those animals' blood couldn't completely clear a person. Exodus 34, 7 says, Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that by no means, and that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, to the third and fourth generation. Notice the emphasis on blood. How can some preachers teach that the blood of Jesus is meaningless and claim that it only represents his death when the Lord requires a blood sacrifice? Hebrews 9, 23, And it was necessary, it was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Everything in heaven is better. Heavenly things don't wax old. The things in the first and second heaven do wax old, but not the third heaven. Hebrews 1, 10, and 11 says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall all wax old as doth a garment. The things down here wax old. The things up there never grow old. 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hebrews 9.24, For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So Jesus didn't enter the earthly tabernacle, but the heavenly. The earthly is just a figure of the true, just like the Passover lamb is the figure of the true. The true is Jesus, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. He appeared in the presence of God for us. He is the true high priest, the true mediator. Hebrews 9.25, Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. So they had to have a bloody animal sacrifices often. Nor yet that he should offer himself often. That was Jesus, who didn't offer himself often. It was one time. But those bloody animal sacrifices, that was often. The work was never finished. But in John 19, 30, Jesus said, it is finished. And he took care of some business after that. And when he got to heaven, he sat down on the right hand of God. He sat down because the work was finished. Hebrews 9, 26 for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Jesus Christ only had to die for sins one time, and what he did on the cross put away sin permanently. It was by the sacrifice of himself 
The devil wants you to sacrifice yourself and your kids to him. He would never lay down his life for you. He's only concerned with getting a throne. Hebrews 9, 27, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. As a general rule, all men die. There are some exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, all men die. You know, you got some exceptions like Enoch and, it, and you know, us who will be alive at the rapture. And you got some exceptions like Lazarus who died twice and uh, Enoch or Elijah who will die twice. There's exceptions, but as a general rule, it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin to salvation. <clears throat> so Jesus Christ was without sin the first time, but Jesus Christ became sin for us on the cross the first time. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So he was without sin the first time, but the second time he isn't going to have to become sin for us on the cross. Hence he is without sin in that sense. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin into salvation. Jesus Christ is coming back in a vengeance. And they're not going to crucify him this time. He's not going to have to become sin for us on the cross again because he did it once. And you can be saved if you'll believe on him and what he did for you on the cross and his death, burial, and resurrection. You can be saved today and have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ wash your sins away permanently.